Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Well, welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. Look, we had some technical difficulties. Welcome. This is Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, I have Mary Beth Wynn. She's going to be a psychic or a reading on the radio. So bear with us. We're going to take a station break real quick, and we will have her on shortly. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Well, welcome again back to the Core Business Show. Today, again, we have the pleasure of having Mary Beth Wynn. She's coming back on the show to talk about Psycho R readings over the radio. And we will have her on shortly. Bear with us a few seconds. Hold on one second. Well, Mary Beth, thank you, and welcome to the program again. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. I do apologize for that. I was having technical difficulty between my Skype and my landline and my telephones. and I'm like, all right. <laughs> We had a lot of electrical storms here last night, and I have the Windstream server, and it's every single time there's a lightning bolt, that thing goes down. So, so I emailed you late last night and said, hey, heads up, I got a feeling. Sure yeah, I, I did see that, and so thank you for still coming on. I guess just oh, yeah. go ahead and recap real quick about the R readings. How do they come to you, and how do we know what the meanings are? Oh, sure. Well... Lang- uh, color of excuse me, language of color is a, a language that we universally speak. Mm-hmm. Everyone sees a color. Even those people who are even colorblind have a different sense of shade and hues of their different colors if they're red, green, colorblind. But as an auric intuitive, I actually can see the energy field without seeing the person. I see it impressionistically. What a TV set does when it re- re- receives a TV or a radio broadcast signal What it'll do is it will translate that information back to something that's understandable for you. So I'll Mm -hmm. look at a person without looking at them, see a color, and I will interpret that color the way I know the language of my own personal language of color, and I'll interpret it for you in reference to your work, reference to your love life, your personality, your direction, your purpose, and what have you. And... It's been working for me for about 25 years. 25 years, wow. Yeah, I have been self-employed for 25 years as a full-time psychic medium. And when I say to people I'm an auric, I have more people who thought I used to sell vacuum cleaners (laughs) (laughs) because of the Auric vacuum cleaner brand. And I'm talking Auric, A-U-R-I-C, not (laughs) (laughs) O-R-E-C-K. So how did you brand discover? problem there, I guess. Yeah. Well, you have your own brand, so you could say that. A powerful brand. So how yeah, did you, you know, growing up, how did these things come to you? Did they just reveal themselves to you or I know we all born with certain gifts. And mm-hmm. how did when did you realize you had this gift? I thought everybody else had it. I thought seeing an aura was pretty boring. Uh, it's like your heartbeat. It's on all the time. And I just tune it out. It's like your heartbeat all the time. And you just tune it out. You know, it's just there. You can't turn it off. <laughs> it's like your heart. You can't just turn your heart off. So it's something that I've had all my life. It wasn't until I was invited 
to of all things, I mean, my tongue to cheek. I was invited to a lady's house where this channeler claimed to channel Gandhi. And I got to feel, I mean, guys, you think you guys are skeptical? You haven't met me. I'm tough on myself. And so I went to this lady's house. And this lady is channeling Gandhi, so she says. And she's talking peace, love, and harmony. And that's fine and dandy. But what I kept noticing was beautiful gold light behind this woman. And so finally, the hostess of the party says to me, so did you get any delightful message from this channeler? And I said, to be honest with you, no, but I got to know, who the heck, where the heck do you get that paint? I want it for my own house. And she's like, what paint? She says, no, my house has got this kind of red wood paneling. And I said, oh, no, <laughs> this light behind her was solid gold. And uh, lo and behold, I find out later on that a gold color can indicate a father figure trying to communicate. And my father had been dead by that time for about 12 years. So I understood at that point, I was seeing the lady's aura, and it wasn't I wasn't picking up on the essence of Gandhi. I was actually picking up on the essence of my father trying to make a connection. So that's wow. how I found out I could see auras. And at first, when I started out, I would say to you, yeah, your color is red. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> didn't know how to tell you that. You <laughs> just said he's red. So by the process of education, and questioning the person, and de defining my own language with the color of auras, I was able to do a psychic reading based on the aura field alone. And then I carry that to the future, because your aura is what you project to the future. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is kind of think of yourself like a little kid at the movies. Put your hand up between the film and the film screen, and you're going to see the image projected on your hand. So in a, like in a really basic little sense, all I'm doing is sticking my hand up <laughs> between you, the source, and your universe and seeing the images that are happening before you recognize them as reality. Wow. We're going to dive. Blow you uh, over to <laughs> there. Wow. So you say, so how many colors are there all together? It's just the colors of the rainbow, basic colors, eight colors, or 16? Great or question. Is it From what if I studied... In graphic thought, I understand there's 256 color choices, but there's even more than that. I've seen colors that I can't seem to express or explain on color wheels. Like, I'll take an art chart that you can buy in any art store. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of looks like this with a blend of this. Most of the time, what works for me is I create my own swatch using paint swatches that I can find from Lowe's, Home Depot, and any other mm -hmm. paint store. I'll go in and go, that's what I need. <laughs> so it is a multitude of colors and hues and shades and textures. Do you know that an aura can actually, you can, or well, a person can communicate an aura just from the texture alone. If the aura is jagged, then you're going to get an angry person or an edgy person. If the aura is wavy, then the person's most of the time happy and delightful. If the person is, or the energy field is flat, like uh, look at the water on a pond with no wind. It's just sort of mm -hmm. flatline. That person is stagnant. <laughs> the energy's not flowing. I like to liken myself to think of myself as an energetic surfer. <laughs> I'm surfing waves, but it's not water waves. I'm surfing. I'm surfing energetic waves. Wow. <laughs> so I know it sounds can... weird. Thank God there's a career no. for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I get it. If, for example, if you're a person over the telephone and a person over Skype or a person in front of you, are those energy fields or stronger when they're in person or is pretty much the same or you can get the, pretty much the whole picture there? It doesn't matter if, if they're all over the, the phone. Pretty much the same. It's, yeah, pretty much the same. Now, there's different types of people that will see auras differently. There's people who see auras and they swear that you can only see the auras with your eyes open. Well, if that's the case, then what the heck's a third eye, okay? It's not exactly mm -hmm. how it's an own eyebrow, eyelid, or what have you. So I disagree with the person out there that says you can only see auras with your eyes open. Not true. Then there's the other people that, like myself, I see auras impressionistically. And that means I'm not using my two eyes. I'm using that sense of, like, all five senses wrapped into one and picking up mm -hmm. on an energy field. So there's different ways of seeing the aura, but I can see an aura from a ghost, from a living person, 
from an inanimate object, or should I say from an inorganic or living object, there's, if there is a thing or situation, it's light. What I'm doing is actually just seeing light. Now, if you look at a solid object like a chair, and then I set you, Kim, next to this chair, not sitting in it, but next to it. Mm-hmm. You see, chair has a top and a bottom and a right and a left and a back and a front. You, your body, has a top and a bottom, a left and a right, a front and a back. The only difference is you've got a soul. The chair doesn't. But, so this, your body is brighter in light, but the chair still has light because you're seeing it. So it's a very subtle frequency there. But your body, on the other hand, is <laughs> it's like looking at a disco ball compared to a flashlight. Or should I say the central sun compared to a candle? <laughs> okay, do you see the difference? Absolutely. And uh, so, so when I see an aura, as long as a person is focused, well, that's not true. I can still see your aura when you're not focused anyway. <laughs> so I just see it. I sense it. Question regarding, mm-hmm. we're going to take a callers in a few minutes, probably the next about three minutes. But however, when it comes to, you say, living and non-living inanimate objects, of course, when uh, do you see an, or a field from a newborn baby, and is oh, yeah. there a field with a dead person? Yes, all the above. Okay. A newborn baby is, wow, a, a baby's energy field would be likening to a blowtorch. The energy field is wow, so fire. strong with a newborn baby. Well, you got to think about it. This child, this soul energy, has just incarnated the solid light being known as our body. It's been in your utero for nine months if it's a healthy baby. Mm-hmm. And the soul that has entered this child's body has been with that central light force known as heaven or as the one place or the source a lot longer than you or I have been around. So that baby is like a recharged battery. <laughs> okay. As we get older, it's always important to tune in and charge our batteries, if you will. But our light eventually will begin to di- diminish, like as we get older and we get ready to pass away, but then we go back to source. So a body of a baby is all very bright. A body, or should I say, an aura of a dead person, on the other hand, the energy field is still there because there's still body energetic decay going on. And so Mm -hmm. there's this transformation of energy going from living to decomposing into the ground. So there's energy being expelled. So it's still there. It's just dim. And for sensitives out there, as myself, we'll pick up on it. But it's a very subtle frequency. Wow. So So even... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I I said I would equate it to you, since you're in music, as, let's say, the baby is the microphone with an omnidirectional microphone. (laughs) You get it all, okay? The the dead body light frequency would be as if the person's in the back of the auditorium speaking through a pressure zone microphone in the front. Very quiet. Okay. Very <laughs> quiet. And slowly as they, I'm not going to say decompose, but as they de- deteriorate and so forth, that source slowly fades to nothing. Phase two, the word no thing is perfect. It's nothing said fast, but it's no thing, no solid object anymore. It's returned to a light, light source that is in a higher frequency than we rea- react to in a 3D reality. I am speaking in very this layman quantum physical terms. Sure. Okay. So, okay. Great. Oh, We're going to go ahead and take... Pulling out Princeton, huh? <laughs> well, we understand. That's all that matters. We're only, uh, I really used to stay where they are. Okay, let's take a caller from 3, uh, 312, and the next one would be 351. Gotcha. Call her, you're on the air. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you doing, 312? What's your name? Uh, my name is Tina. Hi, Tina. You have a gorgeous Hi. orange aura. I will interpret the aura, then I'll ask your question. How's that? Okay. Okay, your aura, first of all, is orange, which tells me you work extremely well under pressure. Mm-hmm. It's a color that tells me you must think about what you want to say before you say it. Because a person who broadcasts in an orange field is a very impulsive, reactive person who gets their point across first. That's what I'm doing with you. Uh, anyway, when I see a lot of orange in a person's energy field, I associate that to 
entrepreneurs, people who are lawyers, performers, mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. that has to do with working in front of the public eye. Now, if I talk to you about love life, you've got to make sure that you give space to the man so that he can speak because he, in a sense, already knows your direction and where you're going before he has any idea. So, Tina, your word for the day is the word patience. Okay. It be hard to understand. Don't master it. So what's your question? Actually, there's this guy that I've known for a while and a long time. And when I ended my relationship, he told me he loves me and he wants to date me. And I wanted to see where our relationship will be going. His name is Dave. Okay. I feel like there's a there's you. It's a, You've moved on. I know you're asking about him. They feel like your words and your actions are not being congruent. I feel that there's a part, there's a reason why you left them in the first place, but I'm feeling like you're backtracking on your words. And it, it, no, this is I a new man. Said, this is a new, no, this is a new person that I've known, but we were just friends. When I left my boyfriend and I told him about it, he told me he wanted to date me. So this is a new person. I'm not talking about the person I used to be with. It's interesting. Because the person you used to be with is either signaling or indicating that he'd like to be back with you, or there's still you still have energetic ties to that old that other person. Okay. Because I'm still sensing a strong connection there. So even well, though you're bringing up the new guy, I'm still feeling you're longing for the old guy. I'm like, well, no, I don't want to be with the old guy anymore. <laughs> Maybe he does, but I don't. I know you're saying that, and it's interesting, but I'm still picking up this. I'm looking at your energy field. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of the term, like, we, you know, you focus, you get what you focus on. Even when mm-hmm. you say you don't want something, whatever mm-hmm. you, you're saying, what you focus on, you get. So if I say to you, Tina, don't think blue, you have to refer to blue, not to think blue. <laughs> yeah, so I'm true. You was energetically, I'm feeling like you're not, I'm not thinking about my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> really? <laughs> your energy field says, yes, you are. <laughs> So once you get clear on what Mm -hmm. you want, then I'm feeling you and David have a better chance of getting involved. So there is a strong possibility. Mm -hmm. I just want to caution you, Tina, that you're comparing Dave to the past or that you're still, in a sense, energetically sitting back there. Mm -hmm. And uh, just give Dave a better chance, another chance, (laughs) a better chance. So I'm going to say it's it's good with Dave as long as you are aware of where you're thinking, okay? Okay. 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 So he That's said. Like, Thank you, Tina. Thank okay. you. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Next caller would be Eric Code nine five one. Nine five one. You're on the air. Hi. This is Saran, and I Hi, wanted Saran. to get ready. Yes, I wanted to sure. say that you picked for me. Thank you. Okay, Saran, your energy field is green, and then it's black. Now, black is not necessarily a negative color in my book. To me, the energy black just means there's something missing. It doesn't mean that it's evil and all that other stuff. It's not. It's just lacking love. And I'm feeling that it just seemed to be, it feels like energetically depressed. And as I look further into your aura, Saran, I see that you're a highly intuitive individual who's not believing in your gift. You ever heard of the word, yeah, but syndrome? Yes. Okay. So you get a great idea. You have this inspiration and then you say, yeah, but. And you derail yourself completely off the path. Now, Saran, have you started your own business yet? No, I have not. Okay, you have a dream of starting a business. I'm feeling, of course, it's a small entrepreneurial business. I see it to be with coaching, counseling, and assisting others. Now, you could be a professional volunteer right now, but I'm feeling that instead of volunteering, take that skill and become a counselor, a lecturer, Somehow you're being an instructor, but it feels like more hands-on than in teaching mode, if you follow what I'm saying. I'm seeing one-on-one coaching and counseling, specifically angled toward young men. Now, I sense that I'm picking up like soldier or man in uniform. Maybe it has to do with a, a child in the military. But I see you assisting and helping young men with post-traumatic stress disorder where they may not be able to relate to society if we're coming back, but I sense you have got a gift of reconnecting people. You understand oh, wow. that? Yes, that makes sense. Yes. Good. It's time you start this business ASAP. These soldiers are coming home. They need you. 
Now, you could possibly create a non-for-profit organization and find a grant so that you can create a salary. But do not buy into this recession economic downturn. That's a just an illusion, guys. If you can, and that goes for everybody listening. If you focus on what you do best, do what you love, the money will follow. This is you. This is you. Okay. This is your time. Okay. Thank okay. Can you. I ask you a question? Take care. Oh, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Our well, next caller is like Erico Erico seven one three. Seven one three. Seven one three. You're on the welcome air. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, Erica713, you're on the air. Okay, you hear me now? Oh, yeah. You, you, we can hear you. Hi, Erica. Go ahead. Okay, my name is Pam. Oh, okay. Hi, Pam. Hi, and, Pam. And I have just uh, lost, I was, I'm in business, and I just like lost uh, almost all of my contracts. And like financial devastation, pretty much. And uh, just, I don't know. I, I don't know okay. what my Ori. <laughs> no, I'm Pam, just, I'm glad I, you I called. I have two new contracts, but I'm just trying to make my you're way. Stay, you're staying afloat out of, out of fear. Now, I'm glad you called, Pam. Your aura field, I'm not going to kid you, is a dark cloud. It's a dark cloud of gray and black. At this point, now, that's the colors of void and missing. As I said, it's not necessarily negative, but it's since it's void and missing, you're approaching these clients with a sense of lack and desperation instead of abundance and love. You have to, if you have to pull it out of the bottom of your stomach, you have got to pull up your courage, look them straight in the eye and say, I am the woman for you. I can do this contract, regardless of what has changed in the past. It's absolute and total belief. Okay. Now, let me look at your energy further. I keep getting the impression of the word military contract. Why have I got military on my head here? 713, is that Virginia? Where are you at? Where are you at? Houston, Houston, Texas. Say that again? Houston, Texas. Houston. Houston, Texas. Okay. Well, that would be NASA down there. Okay. I'm feeling like I'm seeing uniforms to you. Now, I want to look into your aura deeply because I'm feeling like these contracts just canceled out of the blue. It it was almost like you were blindsided from this work. You're doing your da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da. And it's like somebody, maybe it's competition. Maybe same, somebody came in with a cheaper rate, but I get the impression they you actually made more. They Sorry, paid huh? them more than me. Okay. They actually you paid them the more. Belief. They pay them more and they lost. Okay. It's a belief in yourself. You, Pam, you've lost the belief in yourself. I'm telling you, you've got to pull it out of you. I feel like you're hiding. Now, consulting, I'm going to have to ask you what type of work are you doing? Well, I have a profit side and a not for profit side we're waiting on our our non profit. I mean our five oh one C three is like taking forever. And I guess okay. that's where I'm most losing. But I work with people. I do after school programs and I work with senior citizens and we do food pantries, G D classes. Okay. Cool. Then I'm correct to say I'm seeing uniforms. Now have you worked with the prison population lately? No. Okay. I want you to keep this in mind. I'm getting the impression that you're going to be working with the prison population in the near future. I am feeling that you're going to be getting a grant, but it's a grant that has to do with some kind of reform in a prison population. I keep seeing uniforms here, and I'm feeling that, God, it's your belief. I keep getting the impression there's pain. Well, you're right more about that. I, did. What? I said, you're right about that. I have lost. All right. Now, when I... I'm looking deeper into your aura field, and I'm seeing these sparkles of yellowish-orange in your aura. I feel as if what we're doing here is jump-starting you, (laughs) okay? Instead of, okay, Pam, it's extremely important. Instead of focusing on what you lost, it's incredibly vital to focus on what you have and give gratitude and appreciation to what you have currently. Because I'm feeling, you feel like you're stuck in the water, or here's a better way. If you're lost in the woods, instead of trying to find the way out of the woods, make a fire where you're at and let them find you. So take that little story and think about what you can do to generate the energy within you and attract the energy to you. Because I'm feeling like you're you're sending all your precious energy and focusing on what you don't have instead of appreciating what you have. And when you're in appreciation and gratitude mode, God and angels and energies will come flying towards you. Now, I'm seeing 
that deep down inside you have a core color of, of gold, yellow, and orange. I am seeing you working with law, law enforcement, lawyers in the future, and I also see you working with teachers. So I feel that you're going to be working okay. with a prison population of teaching them new coping skills. Okay. You understand this? Yeah. And I, you're, you're right. Because even before this, I had go stage four colon cancer, and it was like this was another blow. But I'll focus on what positive and what I do. Okay. But thank you well, so much. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Pam God bless you. In. Okay. Well, I think Eric code three twelve. Eric code three twelve. You're on the air. I. Uh, I already got a reading. Uh huh. I already got a reading. Okay. So, oh, you're reading? Okay. I'm you're just listening. Okay, great. <laughs> no cool. problem. We're going to take the next caller real quick. Okay. The caller, you're on the air. Hello? Hi. Hello you're there. on the air now. Hi. How are you? Thank you for taking I'm the very, call. You're welcome. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Carol. Okay. There you go. As soon as you said your name, the energy began to shift. Your aura field went from turquoise green to an orange. Now, those three colors wow. tell me that the turquoise green is your innate psychic ability, is that, Carol, you dream in color. You experience deja vu a lot, not a pickup line when you meet people. You've seen them in dreams before you meet them. Now, when I see the colors of turquoise and green together, it's a visual type of color. That tells me photography, interior designing, or anything that has to do with the using the eyes a lot for the living, for a living. Now, I'm also seeing an orange aura coming up around you. And I'm getting a lot of people that are calling your show, Tim, as to be a pers- people who are entrepreneurs themselves. They are leaders. No wonder the colors are yellows and orange that are coming through. Hmm. Now, wow. when I get back to Carol's energy, I keep feeling like, Carol, you have a strong intuition. Things that you dream on come true. Now, I'm also feeling it's very important for you to feng shui, declutter, throw Stuff out that's no longer working for you. Are you into a lot of spring house cleaning lately? Well, I'm going to be moving, and so I haven't started. Okay. Well, I've started a little bit, but I haven't started yet. But yeah, there's going to be some major uh, getting rid of, selling, oh, yeah. giving away, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. In like when that happens, time. not only will that help you energetically, it's going to help you bring more money to you. Now, your energy field, and I'm hearing it through your voice, have you ever considered? In front of the camera, whether it be a model or uh, even maybe voice acting, have you ever considered the modeling, entertainment, voice acting career? Well, actually, and I have a bit of a cold right now, but other than that, yeah, no, I'm a healer. I'm an energetic you are. healer. And I heal also with my voice. Yeah, the vibration. Yes. Of- wow. That's what I'm hearing coming through you. But I'm feeling you're going to take it a step further. Consider a video or a CD a YouTube channel, take it a step further. Get the heck out of your own way and take it to the masses. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what I'm, the move is about, is taking yeah. myself to a place where there will be more doors opening for me. And, uh-huh. And more, is it yeah. Los Angeles? No, actually. it will. No, it will be into Arizona, actually. Arizona. Okay, I'm seeing Los Angeles, and if it's Arizona, it feels like it's the southern end of Arizona, and I'm feeling you will be taking some trap trips out to the California area, Southern California to be exact. And I'm getting the impression that if you continue to focus on your ability to heal, you will be picking up clients that appreciate you, What number one, will pay your fee. And I'm feeling either it be a TV show, a video, CD, but I am feeling you are making a niche in this market. Go for it. Keep Great. focusing yeah, on your dreams. I'm sorry? No, that's wonderful. That I would like to somehow through the internet or however just start to reach people on a bigger scale than in just small gathering. So keep listening yeah. to Tim's show. This man has a plethora of business ideas. It can help okay. you go far. Wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful. Well, that's well, thank great. You for well, calling. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for uh, calling. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Same you here. too. Take care. Okay, we have a question here on. Wake up, call love. Okay, she's asking, my name is Kristen, and I would like to know if Mary pick up when I'm going to start when I would find and start work. And I'm just reading exactly what she has here. Okay, her work's going to be in the medical field. Her energy field is coming through as the pink spectrum. This tells me mm-hmm. that she's empathic. She's very sensitive to crowds, but she loves people. 
but she has to pace herself in crowds because she understands children, older people, animals, and she doesn't put up with adult drama. So as long as she's working with it somehow in the medical field or even helping adults connect with their inner child, she will go extremely far. But I'm seeing her in the medical field, and that seems to be a primary issue with her career. Now, what was her name? Her name is Kristen, I believe. Let me go back and look real quick. Okay. Kristen. Kristen. I'm also sensing the area of New York or in northeast of this country for her work. I'm also seeing the month of August. I don't know if that means she's Leo or Virgo, Mm -hmm. but I keep seeing... Huh, I just keep getting that Zodiac time. If that's not her birthday, I feel it's going to be a special time for her work. So work mm-hmm. time, if she's asking when she's going to start a job, it still feels like I'm seeing Virgo, Leo Virgo. She says on here, uh, Libra. She's a Libra, okay. Okay, then I'm still feeling like the July-August time period is going to be the time that she goes into a full-time job. She could be on a 90-day probation time period beforehand, but by that time, she's in a full-time job. Tell her or ask her, what is she doing in the medical field, or does she have she studied that? Because I'm seeing so much pink in her aura field. And she says, no. Huh? I'm not. No, I'm not explaining. She's a financial it. She's a analyst. Mm-hmm. She's going to be if she stays in financial an- analyzing, it'll be for the Medicare, Medicaid, insurance, or something to do with insurance billing in the future. But it is medical. I'm not budging from it. The energy won't shift. Yeah, and she said, okay, so I guess she's getting it. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're <laughs> welcome. Appreciate it okay. on that one. You know, uh, you know, times when I start to, when I do readings like this, there are times where people will be like holding on to what their old job was. And they'll go, what's my future job? And sometimes I'll see jobs completely out of the blue, different career. But it could be a combination, such as this last person. She's in the financial industry. But I feel like she could be doing the finances to a hospital instead of to a bank. And the way the baby boomers are going, yeah, our new banks are going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, definitely. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, I can't help with that particular thing. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, it uh-huh. is what it is, so it's not going to yeah, happen Yeah, annuity, from that. here you come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially we're living longer. So. And, yeah, and, really, interpret- don't outlive- go ahead. I said don't outlive your money. There you go. There you go. Be elaborate. It, you know, in seeing colors, I mean, bright colors, and each color ha- has their own meaning, meaning, is there a website that kind of tell you as you can do research on your particular colors or the resources they can go to to try to understand who they are? Cause it, it, it's ironic. Beginning of this year, I think the clergy and some people, I think T.D. Jakes, I don't know if you heard of him out of the Dallas area, and he was on Oprah's show a month ago. And he talked about the beginning of the year, a New Year's Day, a New Year's Eve, to talk about go with what you just mentioned, what you have passion for. Mm-hmm. Because with your passion, you have, your, you know, you have a vision there, you have purpose there, and it's all about not being the thing that people want you to be, but be the thing that you know you have passion that you are set out to be. So I think as we come into this world, we know we have a certain thing that we're created to do. Sometimes we don't go there. We try to play it safe, but we go exactly what we have passion for. It takes care of itself. Right. And understanding the, the meanings of colors like that, if people who's looking for that particular thing of finding who they are, because sometimes we have our mid-life crisis or our mid-year career, Maybe not a crisis, but a career change. You have done this for 20 years or 25 years. Now you want to go in this next set of life. What do you, advice do you have then for people like that who are We're in their 40s to... now, who discovering who they are, and they can't afford to discover at this point who they are? Okay. First thing I would do is place yourself in a meditative position. Pray, journal, meditate. Get your mind clear as much as you possibly can. Mm-hmm. Then place yourself in an attitude of gratitude. Be gratitude, be gracious and appreciative of everything you have, everybody you know. Just place yourself in a place of receiving. So what you're doing is you're acknowledging everything in your life, even the bad stuff. Just saying, you know, thank you, God, for showing me what I don't want in a man. Thank you, God, for showing me what I don't want in a woman. Thank you, God, for showing me what I don't want in work. Whatever it is, okay? Mm-hmm. And then thank you, God, for showing me what I do love. Thank you, God. Just keep on going into a gratitude mode. 
Once you are doing that, wow. place yourself in intuitive or in a prayer of your choice. Choose your religion. Go into a prayer that sets you up for openness, for love. And you would be amazed on how fast the inspirations come through. Because the aura field holds the thoughts of spirit. It's our brains and our body that thinks and processes those thoughts into reality. Mm -hmm. What you're looking for are the thoughts and the inspirations that come through. If you think about it too much, you are think you're holding on to something. You're, it's like you're concentrating too hard. And intuitives and psychics, we can't concentrate. You just go with the flow. So you've got to place yourself in a flow sort of mindset and then let these inspirational thoughts come flying through. And then I would ask that you would do this process for the next, let's say, four days. And mm-hmm. then the, each night you do this. And you let these thoughts just come through, flow through, write them down on a piece of paper. The next day, you do the same thing. Place, your, place yourself in an attitude of gratitude. Clear your mind. Mm-hmm. Make your prayer. Ask God, what are my inspirations? What are my next direction? Write it down on a piece of paper. Do it for the next four days. By the fifth wow. day, go back through the list. And count how many times you repeated something, because you may be able to fine-tune all those ideas down to maybe one or two goals and directions. And what was repeating in a natural flow is your direction. Okay, You just got to clear okay. through the mind clutter. And that should be revealed to you after that. That's right. Okay. You want to take another caller real quick? Of course. Go ahead. Okay. Justina. Okay. You're on the air. Justina. Help me. Hi, Hi, you're on the air. Welcome to the program. Hi, Mary. Hi, Justina. How are you? I'm good. It's just good. what you pick up for me. I see a gold aura, which is telling me that you're either in school or thinking about being a teacher or instructor of some kind. I'm sensing that you are a very fast learner, teacher, thoughts. I keep getting education energy to you, a lot of it. I'm also feeling... That you're at this point in your life, you seem to be analyzing to the point of paralyzing, overthinking things. No, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is school, lots of school, education, classes. It's not necessarily has to be a four year school, but it's you're expanding your mind. Never stop learning. Sure. Now I'm feeling like I'm seeing a young man about your age as well, and I feel like I'm saying the name Joe, Joseph, Joe. John, maybe, but Joe. And I feel like they're involved in a relationship. But if for any reason he's feeling threatened by your direction or career, then it's not the right person for you. I sense that you're going to be involved with a loving relationship who is supporting you of your dreams. I'm going back to this again, but I keep seeing teaching, school, college, student. What's going on there? Why am I seeing so much yellow for you? I plan on opening my own business. I plan on going back for my master's. I plan on getting my CFA. I plan on getting CFP. So probably that's what you're picking up. Your aura with your teaching is so close to your body. I would predict the time period just based on the light signature of your aura, one to six months of go to school, September, sooner the better. Okay. Okay. Don't put this off. Your soul knows where you're going. Your soul has a goal. It's knowing where you're going. It's the ego self that's holding you back. Stop doubting you. And stop okay. putting your boyfriend on first burner. Would you cut that out? Keep feeling, yeah, you're putting too many people in front of you. Stay focused on what you're doing. Mm-hmm. School, go to it. In fact, after you graduate school, I feel like you're going to pay it forward and offer yourself as a teacher, an adjunct teacher to future students. On whatever you decide to do. Now, you said your CFA as accounting and financing. And yet, I see that in the future, you will be owning a school based on teaching. So okay. it could be teaching of business, like a business school, but you're overseeing it. Think really big. Is that yeah, your business? This about, teaching. Uh, financial coaching? Yes. But you're going to be coaching other financial coaches. Do you understand this? Wow, that's big. Yeah. So you're a teacher of teachers. Oh, wow. You have to think big here. You've got such a brilliant yellow aura, and that's a teacher energy to me. And it's so close. The aura on the average person sits from from the body to about a foot out in the fourth dimension reality. Okay, looking at your aura field, whoa, you are coming in around two feet bright off your body. That's telling me that light 
It's six months. You got to get into school by September. My goodness. Don't delay this. Okay. Okay. I get that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's Thank powerful. You. Good luck to you. Thank you. I feel so a much. lot of success you. there. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for calling the program. I guess within in the next five minutes, I guess kind of wrap things up. Talking, you know, for example, you have on on TV someone just putting a question here about people seeing the future. Is that a way that people can see the future? Is what a way? You mean seeing an aura? I mean, yeah. Can they see the well? Can they see the person? I understand you can see parts of it, but can it, premonition, for example, can a person actually see a scene of the future in a yes. sense? Oh, sure. It's a clairvoyancy. It's focusing on the future, and it would be like if you were staring at a TV set for the first time, and your eyes are mm -hmm. adjusting to the light, and the first thing you'll see is white, and then the colors will start coming in, and as the colors begin to take shape, you will begin to get places, names, dates, people, the picture will all come through, and it's called clairvoyancy. Wow. And so, yes, absolutely, you can get a glimpse of the future. But remember, you're getting the glimpse of the future from the source of who it's projecting. So remember, we're always in charge of our own reality, no matter what, even the negative mm -hmm. stuff. We are plugging into it. If you don't want negative stuff to happen, unplug from that and start focusing on the center of being balanced, the middle way, okay? And when you're in that balanced life, you can see the positive and the negative from a place of love. So you're not hung up on the negative stuff or hung up on the super positive stuff. So, yes, mm -hmm. you can simply see things in the future as clairvoyantly. Absolutely. I do wow, it all you the know, time. Hmm? Yeah, I've seen people like, for example, I guess that's where this question has come from, that you see a snapshot of time in your head in the future. You don't know it. You've seen it that whole scene play out maybe it's a like three minutes or five minutes mm -hmm. and you see that whole scene maybe from your childhood that you've seen it over and but when it happens it's like a revelation oh my gosh i've seen this particular scene i was here in this particular place and this happened but you only get maybe like a three minute or a five minute window nothing that really happens but you just have that particular scene that you've seen from years ago, now it's come to fruition. Some people have that particular gift, or it, how is that played out in this universe? What you're speaking that about some people, deja vu. Deja vu is a word for seeing things that you have seen once before. My theory on deja vu is a form of synchronicity. You see, there's no such thing as coincidence. Everything mm -hmm. happens in a synchronistic time and divine order. And there are people, and all of us have this ability to experience deja vu. So the person, Carol, who called in, whose aura field was blue-green going into mm -hmm. the sort of orange color, blue-green, she's dreaming in color, and she experiences deja vu a lot. You can get deja vu through dreams, daydreams, or sudden instantaneous feelings of, oh, my God, I've seen you, I've been here before. And what you're seeing here is sort of like a fold in time's not linear, time's not past, present, and future. It's wavy. It moves. It undulates. Sometimes time overlaps itself, and you'll experience deja vu. You'll have seen it either in a thought, a dream, or what have you, and it'll experience it because you're not linear either, <laughs> okay? You're constantly sure. changing, okay? Ourselves like to think we are in linear time. We all buy into it that this is a Wednesday, okay? That's mass collective consciousness buying into this illusion of Wednesday. But why mm -hmm. is it that for my Wednesday, it's moving real fast, but for your Wednesday, it's dragging? <laughs> because it's a wow. matter of how we see it, interpretation. Do you think we as humans, once we're not going to say really clear, but we get things that seem like that deja vu, things that that comes from you all different directions, and maybe it is at that moment when you're clear from all distractions that these things come to you. And then that in our conscious mind, like, for example, some people will see, say that they see colors. Some people say they, they see ghosts or they have this and that. Maybe it's just a snapshot of that time when they're not on guard, if that makes sense. 
They're not guarding yeah. themselves, and they open themselves up, and all of a sudden they see the universe. And then they right. come to back to reality. This doesn't make sense to me. I need to get back into this world. Why is that, in your opinion? Well, that we all have that ability to see in those higher dimensional realities, if you will, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, and higher. And we all can att- attain that energy. That's where meditation and prayer comes from. Because there's that mm-hmm. intention of projecting out a repetitive prayer, or repetitive motion, repetitive chanting will take you into higher levels. But wow. And when we come back into our everyday 3D reality, it's our ego that keeps us organized in thoughts that we could drive a car so that we could have conversations with other people. Because if you happen to be facing out to other dimensions and you're driving, I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the road when you're driving. So the ego is a, it's a good thing in such its boundaries that keeps you on this reality to pay your bills, do your thing, or whatever it is. But you can incorporate yourself with what your soul wants or incorporate what you want with your soul's goals. That's mm-hmm. with my book where I've written called Soul's Goals, The Law of Reflection. And what we're doing here is that your life, as you know it, is a direct reflection of what your heart projects. Say it again. The life is a direct reflection of what your heart is projecting. Now, if you meditate with through your heart, through your love, not talking about lust, love, talking about unconditional love, you can tap into higher dimensional realities and then bring them into this 3D reality and become an inventor, become a business person, woman, man, and become more than what you are through inspiration. You know what I'm saying? I follow. So you become, you receive that information from higher realms of the world and then you bring it into your reality, process it, and be, make it real for yourself. You want to be a singer? Tap into the higher realms of your gifts. Thank God for giving you the vo- vocal cords and the a voice box and the talents to sing. In that sense of gratitude, it'll come flying right out. Great. And we're going to leave it at that, Mayor Beth. Thank you for coming on the program again. Oh, I've had a blast. I enjoy your show so much. And thank you to the listeners for listening in again. Great. Yeah. Well, we'll be back in touch. But thank you for coming on. You bet. And just okay. make a real quick mention, if I can. Oh, your website? You Go ahead. It. Yeah, please. www.marybethren.com. Think of a bird with two wings. I'm a bird with two N's. W-R-E-N. Or Google me. And the, Okay, Google. And also your telephone number there at your, on your website? 704-566-8300. It's 566-8300. Area code 704. I'm in Charlotte, home of the Democratic National Convention, coming up in August and September. <laughs> Should be wow. interesting. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Beth. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, okay. and God bless. Same Bye-bye. here. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.